I call this meeting to order. How is everybody tonight? All righty. And uh, call to order. And uh, would we have a roll call? Yes, Your Honor. All present. Okay. Uh, for, then let, let's also stand for the invocation and the pledge. Okay. Heavenly Father, creator of everything great, give us the wisdom and understanding to do the people's will. For this we pray. Now we can say Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, um, call to order, moment of silence. And uh, thank you. Uh, now, can we have a vote for the certification of the closed session? So moved. Second. Mm -hmm. All right, do we have the vote open? One moment. The vote is open. By a vote of 11 to 0, you certify the closed session to be in accordance with the motion to recess. Okay, thank you. And now we have a uh, uh, motion for the uh, approve the minutes of the informal and formal sessions of October 15, 2024, and the formal <laughs> session of October 22, 2024. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, if we get the vote open. Second. The vote is open. <coughs> Councilmember Hanley, may I have your vote, please? Push it. You push it. It's not. You can just give me a verbal vote, oh, Councilmember Hanley. Verbal. <coughs> Ms. Hanley, may I have your verbal vote, vote please? By a vote of 11 to 0, you approve the minutes as submitted. Okay, thank you all very much. And at this point, it's the time for the uh, presentations. And at first, I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Henley to read a resolution of recognition by some local heroes. Do I have oh, yeah, please uh, come up. Do we have Kellen Good here, mm -hmm. Ian Arnett, and Ross Benzel here? Oh, yeah, come on up. Welcome. I'm going to stand here just so I can use the microphone, and I don't want a word of this to be missed by the people who are hearing it in the audience. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Whereas on Friday, September 6, 2024, Kellum High School students, Kellum Good and Ian Arnett, headed to Little Island Park in Sandbridge to take advantage of their day off from school. About an hour into surfing, they noticed a group on shore frantically waiting to get their attention. In that moment, they witnessed a man face down in the water. And whereas, without hesitation, Good and Arnett sprang into action, demonstrating courage and quick thinking. Good paneled to shore to ensure 911 had been dialed while Arnett pulled the man onto his surfboard. And <clears throat> whereas, Arnett immediately used a CPR technique taught by their teacher and wrestling coach, Ross Benzel, allowing the man to cough up water and take a breath. Good joined Arnett back in the water to help bring the man to shore. Good grabbed hold of both surfboards as Arnett brought the man to higher ground. And <clears throat> whereas these two remarkable young men exhibited extraordinary bravery selflessness and teamwork during a life-threatening incident. Their prompt actions and quick thinking saved a man's life that day. And whereas their actions not only reflect their outstanding character, but also serve as an inspiring example to their peers and the entire community. And whereas, while the city wants to recognize and celebrate their acts of heroism, 
that contribute to the safety and well-being of others, it is also important to highlight their exceptional personal successes. And <clears throat> whereas Kellen Good is an honor roll student and member of the Kellen High School varsity wrestling and golf teams, in 2022, Good received the Sportsmanship Award and the highest GPA award for wrestling. The following year, he placed third in the region 6A wrestling tournament, earning the most improved wrestler award and his second sportsmanship award. At the end of the 2023-2024 season, Good was presented with the Coaches Award. Good is active on the Student Council Association Executive Board, Kellum High School Captains Council, and as a 2024 leadership workshop delegate. Good shares his wrestling knowledge with the Kellum Matt Rat Rats, a youth wrestling program. Good also dedicates his time to the West Neck Educators Club, St. Baldrick's Foundation, Sam's event, and the Virginia Beach Little League. And whereas Ian Arnett, an honor roll student with a 4.1 GPA, has received seven end of course academic awards to include the Physical Education Department Award. As a member of the Helen Kellum High School Varsity Wrestling. Arnett is a two-time All-State wrestler and a two-time regional wrestling champion. Arnett is a Wrestling Academic Award winner and, as a sophomore, was named MVP of the wrestling team. Arnett has earned notable recognitions on the lacrosse and golf teams as well. He is an active member of the National Honor Society and is a 2024 Leadership Workshop Delegate. Arnett is also active in his community, serving over 300 volunteer hours, mentoring Kellum Matt Rats, and volunteering with the West Neck Educators Club for the past four years. And whereas Ross Benzel graduated from Kellum High School in 2012 and attended Limestone University, where he completed his bachelor's degree in 2016, Coach Ross Benzel returned to his alma mater and has been an invaluable mentor to students and young athletes, dedicating countless hours to their development both on and off the mat. <clears throat> His unwavering support, encouragement, and knowledge has instilled values such as teamwork, <coughs> resilience, and sportsmanship in his students. We are incredibly grateful for his commitment to shaping the future of our students. And now, for, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia, that the Virginia Beach City Council formally honors Helen Good and Ian Arnett for their bravery and quick actions in saving a life, and to Ross Spenzel for his guidance and mentorship that's transpired beyond the classroom and the wrestling room. This resolution is presented as a testament to their exceptional courage and commitment to the welfare of others given by the Council of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia, the 12th day of November, 2024, and presented this resolution duly signed by each member of the Virginia Beach City Council. And I just want to say how impressed it was to me, uh, not only that these two young men knew what to do, but actually did it, and they attributed the fact that they had all of this training from their wrestling coach. And we want to thank you Say a few words, please. <laughs> 
Uh, I knew this was coming, but I, I told all the coaches and the staff at Kelm High School, well, what we do... I'm sorry, Mr. Benzo, could you please speak into the microphone so we could all hear you? Thank you. Now you know what it's like to be on the spot, right? <laughs> I'll, hold it, I'll hold it down here for you. Um, what I was saying was what we do, teaching is important, but a lot of it doesn't really apply unless they take it out into the real world and actually put it into effect. So I think mainly the spotlight's on these two um, young men because it, it takes more for someone to actually listen and to apply it, and that's what we try to get them to do. Um, so it's amazing when someone actually does, and we can use them as an example for future youth coming up. I would just like to thank everyone for coming and supporting us and like allowing us to have this opportunity to be recognized by the city and the family. And it's uh, like Virginia Beach is very important to me and Ian. Both of us have grew up here doing like activities day in, day out. So we just like to say thank you. Hey, thanks a lot. Virginia Beach is a city of heroes. So at this time, we're gonna ask Chief Hutch to re uh, acknowledge a couple very, very special organizations. Test, test, are we on? Yep. Okay. Do we have folks from here for uh, Task Force Two? Everybody come forward from Task Force Two, please. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks. So Craig's in the middle, so he's going to speak. <laughs> Remember what I told you when we went to Haiti. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, special for me to be able to read this um, to the team. Uh, I'm an original member, so it was uh, with much pride that I got to see them go down in uh, Florida and then Carolina and then back to Florida. So we've done that trip before, but uh, here we go. Um, hurricane Helene, a powerful category four hurricane made landfall on September 27th, 2024 in the Big Bend region of Florida near Perry, bringing maximum state winds of 140 miles an hour. After reaching peak intensity, Helene weakened as it moved inland and transitioned to a post-tropical cyclone over Tennessee. The storm stalled there before dissipating on September 29th. In North Carolina, the storm caused catastrophic damage, especially in the western Appalachian region. Helene's remnants as a tropical storm brought unprecedented rainfall in towns that we all know and love, such as Asheville, Swanona, Chimney, Chimney Rock, Montreat and Lake Lure. The, du the deluge led to widespread flooding as rivers breached their banks, as we all saw on national television, inundating communities, destroying homes, and damaging infrastructure. We saw where the several dams were breached and mudslides created further destruction with power, transportation, communication systems significantly disrupted. The storm tragically resulted in at least 98 deaths. Virginia Task Force 2, the Type 1 Urban Search and Rescue Team with 80 members was deployed ahead of Hurricane Helene, along with 22 other additional teams um, from across the affected states. Initially staged in Orlando, they were later reassigned to search and rescue missions in Mitchell County, northeast of Asheville. In five days, the team assessed 7,684 structures in the county, assisted 224 residents, evacuated, I'm so proud of y'all, I can't stand it, <laughs> evacuated 12 people needing urgent care and disrupted essential, and, and disrupted, <laughs> distributed essential supplies. They also work with the county school system to ensure the safety of every student and clear debris from roads and driveways, helping restore community access. 
part of what we were built for was for the rescue mission. But what we have turned into is the group that, that takes care of our folks afterwards, blankets, water, food, anything. Uh, our logistics specialists work diligently. They know the way the procedures to get people what they need and they pull it off with great abundance. I'll start back. Hurricane Milton, another powerful storm, struck Siesta Key, Florida on October 9th as a Category 3 hurricane, causing significant flooding and triggering a deadly tornado outbreak, leading to an additional 32 fatalities as of October 21st. In advance of Milton, Virginia Task Force 2 dispatched an additional 17-person water rescue team to Orlando, where they staged for water rescue ap operations in Pasco Pasco County, Florida. The county faced extensive flooding with over a foot of rain, isolating numerous homes. This team worked nonstop for over 24 hours, evacuating nearly 200 residents from, flood, from the flooded area. Now, therefore, I, Robert M. Bobby Dyer, Mayor of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia, do hereby proclaim a recognition to Virginia Task Force 2 to support Hurricane Helene response and recovery efforts. In Virginia Beach, I call upon the citizens and members within the government agencies, public and private institutions, business and schools in Virginia Beach to also be neighbors helping neighbors during emergencies for the benefit and betterment of the community so that future generations can appreciate and further uplift our beloved city of Virginia Beach. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the official seal of the city of Virginia Beach, Virginia, to be affixed this 12th day of November, 2024. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we really do appreciate the, um, the support that we get for Virginia Task Force 2. It is one of the 28 national teams, and it is a very important asset, not only to our community, but as you heard tonight, to the country. Um, the 28 USAR teams on these two storms alone, uh, you we talked about the 7,000 homes that the, our task force did, but in total, the, they checked out 102,000 structures. They helped evacuate uh, and made contact with 4,100 people. And they uh, checked on 174,994 174, damaged structures and observations and bridges, tunnels, and access, access points. So the system is very important. The skills translate directly to our community as well. We, uh, we take the skills that we learned through the FEMA USAR system, and some of you have seen our structure collapse school. And, uh, and we use those on our streets every day. It's an important asset for the community. It's an important asset for the country. And we really do appreciate the support that we get from being the host here. We staff it with a regional approach and all of our communities in Hampton Roads supply members for when we deploy. We obviously couldn't deploy 120 people without a regional concept. So I just want to say thank you to the council for so supporting this initiative. It's funded by a federal grant and we're really proud of the work that these men do out on the street, men and women do out on the street uh, in our community and out in the country. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, continuing tonight's theme, uh, the city employees employed, uh, deployed to support hurricane lead response and recovery, please come up. And Chief Hutch has double duty tonight. <laughs> and I'm very proud of it.
welcome. All right. Good stuff. Okay. So uh, I'll just start here. Hurricane Helene has significantly impacted numerous communities, leaving behind unimaginable devastation, as we've all talked about and seen. And this has challenged the resilience and spirit of our fellow citizens. In response to this disaster, dedicated employees of the city of Virginia Beach stepped forward to provide vital support and disaster response and recovery efforts. These individuals exemplified, many of them standing right here in front of us, you know, a myriad of different jobs while they were deployed, exemplified extraordinary commitment, professionalism, and compassion while assisting in the relief efforts, coordinating resources, and providing essential services to those in need. The efforts of these city employees have made a profound difference in the lives of those affected by the hurricane, showcasing the strength of our community and the dedication of our public servants. It is important to recognize and honor these employees for their selfless contributions, contributions and unwavering resolve during this challenge is one of the most challenging times. We express our deepest gratitude to the city employees who deployed to support disaster response and recovery efforts in the wake of Hurricane Helene and for their service and commitment to our community. Now I therefore, for, for Robert M. Bobby Dyer, Mayor of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia, do hereby proclaim a recognition of city all city employees who deployed to support Hurricane Helene response and recovery efforts. In Virginia Beach, I call upon the citizens and members within government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, and schools in Virginia Beach to also be neighbors helping neighbors. Couldn't be more true than what y'all did. During emergencies for the benefit and the betterment of the community so that future generations can appreciate and further uplift our beloved city of Virginia Beach. And witness whereof I, I have here and to set my hand and cause the official seal of the city of Virginia Beach, Virginia, to be affixed this 12th day of November, 2024. All right. Thank you. Okay. Mayor and Council, we want to thank you for this recognition. Um, it certainly is appreciated by city staff. I would like to kind of say two other things with you. I know you've had a long afternoon and probably have a, a lot this evening, uh, so, so I'll keep it short. Um, but one, I, I did want to share with you that the night of the, when, when the storm went through southwest of Virginia, um, Washington County, Virginia, put a call out for help across the state. And they asked statewide, they asked for anybody that could help to please send ambulances. And certainly the group represented here is more than just ambulances and sent incident management folks, communications folks, and, and our EMS personnel. But you speak to City of Heroes. I wanna, I wanna just share with you um, how much, how very true that is. We were the only city in the Commonwealth of Virginia to answer that call. And so within a matter of two hours, we had um, two ambulances and a support vehicle on the way, um, people that dropped every plan they had for the next several days, and we were able to answer that call. So I'm certainly proud of that. I know you are as well, and I think that's a testament to us as a City of Heroes. And I think additionally, I would like to say, although he would probably prefer I don't, that our ability to do this and to respond and be there for others is really a testament to the leadership of our city manager, Patrick Duhaney and his staff. They were on the phone with us that evening, um, you know, giving us the approval and helping us work through some of the, the bureaucracy we needed to to get on the road, but um, we certainly couldn't do that without his support. So thank you. Uh, thank you all.
Okay, can we have uh, the folks from the National Homeless Youth Awareness Month come up, please? You know, Virginia Beach is indeed a city of heroes, and a lot of those do community work that is so stellar that makes us the great city we are. I've asked uh, my fellow friend and fellow council member, uh, Sabrina Wooten, if you would kindly do the honors for these people. Good evening. Uh, the proclamation for the National Homeless Youth Awareness Month reads as follows. Or as November was first declared as National Homeless Youth Awareness Month in 2007, and since then, November has been a time to acknowledge those youth experiencing homelessness, with as many as 4.2 million youth per year experiencing homelessness. And whereas, while trying to survive on the streets, youth are exposed to countless dangers, with an increased likelihood of substance abuse, impulsivity, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and a vulnerability of being trafficked. And whereas Stand Up For Kids Hampton Roads and Connect With The Wish have committed themselves to working directly with and to bringing together community partners to make a significant collective impact for all homeless youth in our area. And whereas Stand Up For Kids Hampton Roads has been in Virginia Beach and helping homeless and disconnected youth since 1991 and is committed to changing the lives of this most vulnerable population by means of drop-in, center feeding nights, mentorship, pay for grades programs, clothing closets, emergency shelter, and housing programs, their mission is simple ending the cycle of youth homelessness. And whereas Connect with a Wish is committed to those who are in aging out or have aged out of foster care since 2014 when they were founded. Their mission to connect the wishes and needs of children in Virginia Beach foster care with the generosity of our community. We provide the resources and support needed to give these children the opportunity to grow into positive and productive members of our community. Now, therefore, I, on behalf of Robert M. Bobby Dyer, Mayor of Virginia Beach, the City of Virginia Beach, do hereby proclaim National Homeless Youth Awareness Month in Virginia Beach. And I encourage all citizens to be there for children in need and to observe this month of November as the National Homeless Youth Awareness Month. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Nicole Pixler and I'm the Executive Director of Stand Up For Kids in Hampton Roads. I would sincerely like to thank Mayor Bobby Dyer for presenting this proclamation and for all the council members 
the unwavering support of council members like Work Remick and Michael Berlucci, always willing to listen and show up. Speaking of showing up, I would like for you to look behind me in this room of all the members of our community who have shown up for Homeless Youth Awareness Month. Showing your support in November, being Homeless Youth Awareness Month in Virginia Beach is huge. Showing up to let you all know how important this issue is and how much it means to all of us. The same way that Stand Up For Kids and Connect With A Wish shows up for our most vulnerable population. Showing them unwavering support, love, compassion, and stability. Did you know that half of the homeless people that walk around have history in foster care? Prevention is more important now than ever. We have youth getting addicted to drugs and being trafficked through our streets and in our hotels at the oceanfront as I stand here and say these very words. We need your help. Affordable housing is lacking and the money to house this vulnerable population seems to be the hardest to obtain. Take Two is a local solution that needs your support. The Connect With A Wish and Stand Up For Kids project is imperative to ending youth homelessness. Stand Up For Kids is a drop-in center that is open three evenings a week. We serve food and friendship, and if you're curious to know how these nights go, I encourage you to come and sit, have a meal with the youth. You can learn so much by just listening. A quick story that I would like to share with you. I received a phone call from a local principal of a Virginia Beach High School last Thursday. She was desperately trying to find resources for a young man who was turning 18 that very same day. And for his 18th birthday was told by his stepmother and father that he was not to return home after Friday. This is verified by the school and the phone calls began. I'm happy to say that we arranged for this young man to go directly from school on Friday to our shelter. And he would never have to touch the street. This young man deserves a chance, just like all those before him and all those next. But when the money is limited, we're limited to who we can help. I urge you to talk about it. I know thinking of homeless youth is uncomfortable, but I also know from experience that uncomfortability brings change. We need change now. These youth are the future, future city council members, future teachers, future police officers, future leaders. I hope with your help that they get the chance that they deserve. Just remember what Mark Stevens has always said is correct. If you save a homeless youth, it will not be a homeless adult. Thank you. God bless you for what you folks do. You make Virginia Beach great. I tell you, it's wonderful. I tell you what, some very well-deserving folks tonight, but that's part of what the heart and soul of Virginia Beach is. Okay, at this point, I'm going to have a bid opening. Uh, bids for a non-exclusive franchise agreement. Pursuant to Virginia Code Section 15.2-2102, I will now summarize the bids that have been received for the proposed franchise agreement to the authorized uh, guilt guided horse uh, riding tour on the beach in the resort area. One bid was received as follows. Virginia Beach Horseback, Horseback Inc. has bid. And that would be for $3,500 per term with the first term commencing upon execution of the franchise through May 15th of 2025. Four additional renewals may be granted upon mutual written agreement of the parties in 2025, 2026, 2027, 2027, and 2028 for the periods of October 1st through May, May 15th. Are there any other persons desiring to sit, uh, submit a bid at this time? Okay, seeing none, we will go forward. Uh, city staff has evaluated the bids received and recommends that Virginia Beach Horseback Inc. be awarded a non-exclusive uh, franchise agreement. We will now open the public hearing for the following franchise agreement to operate a guided horse riding tours at the beach and the resort, uh, resort. Any speakers? No, sir. Okay. At that point, we'll take that. We'll take care of that. Um, number two is a any speakers on the proposed charter amendment implement 10-1 election system? Yes, sir. The first speaker is R.K. Kowalitz. See him. Um, Henderson Vaughn. Henderson Vaughn. 
Anderson, how are you? After Mr. Vaughn is Stacy Cummings. Good evening. Welcome. How you doing? Congratulations on your reelection. Thank you. And for those that ran for all our seats on the council, and if you didn't win, never fear, because God always has something in store better. Once again, we're here, but I'm here for the simple reason, because uh, my campaign has always been, ever since I've been in the city of Virginia Beach, or any city that I stayed, is the future generation, and that's the young people. With the 10-1 situation, uh, I know that um, it's been stated that most of the people at Virginia Beach don't want it. But we, can, we, we continue to spend millions of dollars going to court to change something that it was the citizen of Virginia Beach that wanted it. So I don't understand how we keep taking taxpayers' dollars and trying to turn something around that's already been approved. And with everything that's going on in our communities with young people, we should be focusing on the gun violence and try to change their attitudes. And you just can't take, change your attitudes with young people with lip service. If you're not directly talking to them and expressing to them, the most important thing is about the future generation. They don't understand that love is the key to every problem that you face in your community. And if we don't stop, we are going to lose a generation of young people to the pipeline to prison and to the cemetery. So how do you stop it if you don't have the funds directed to solving the problem? And most of all, directing your problem and solutions to the young people. You have to get their attention. If you don't get their attention, the streaks will. And the way the entertainment industry and the internet is, they are getting their attention. That's why we have the problem. And my, you know, I, for me, the 10 1 system should be in place because it gives everybody an opportunity throughout the city for an opportunity to run for office. But most important is we got to solve the problem in the community because that's where the problem lies. Young people don't come to city council meetings. But they at meetings, but it's a negative way that they're seeing things. And sometimes God has a way of making and getting people attention. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for coming. Good seeing you. The next speaker is Stacey Cummings. After Mr. Cummings is Bernita Richardson. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, and Ms. Vice Mayor, and members of council. There are people who believe, have sincere beliefs in the merits of the 10-1 system. There are people that have firm beliefs in the merits of the 731 system. I happen to be part of the latter. But I'm not here to argue about the merits of one system or the other. Council is considering recommending to our state legislature whether to adopt, formally adopt the 10-1 system into our charter. In doing so, they'll be doing that without getting the voice, without hearing the voice of the people. Over the last eight months or so, I've been out campaigning, and I've been fortunate enough to have been blessed with the um, with winning the uh, eighth district seat, and I'll be joining you here shortly. But I spent a lot of time knocking on doors, and by and far, the people out there do not understand the 10-1 system. They don't understand why we changed and why it's up, uh, why we had to even go to that. So I believe that before we do anything, we should ask the people what they would like to have done. They should have the opportunity to listen and to understand the merits of each system. And that that should be taken into account. I know that we've had, uh, we've had uh, consultants, we've had surveys, but I've been out there talking to the people. They don't understand it. So, uh, you know, I believe in the people. I believe that when I was knocking on doors, uh, most people didn't know before I would knock on their door if I was white or black. Little did they know that I'm Native American. And it didn't matter to them. When it came time to vote, they voted for the person that they thought was the most qualified. I'm going to be representing a district that is one of the wealthiest, 
and has the highest single home, single family ownership in the city. And before me, they elected a younger African American to this position. Now they have an old Native American. And I don't think anybody knew I was Native American until I just said it. My, uh, quite frankly, most people didn't even know my gender until they met me at the door or at the polls. So I believe in the people. They elected the person they thought was best regardless of race or gender. And I believe if we ask the citizens of Virginia Beach, they'll make the right decision about how we should carry our elections going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker is Bernita Richardson. After Ms. Richardson is AC. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members, and lovers of liberty. It's disheartening, I think, and a travesty that the city has continued to ignore the will and voting selection of the residents who voted way back in 1994. The delays can be compared to that of gerrymandering and election suppressing, voter suppression. The residents unequivocally voted to remove big business from interfering in our local elections. We don't want, nor do we appreciate individuals not living in our respective districts, selecting, electing, funding, controlling, manipulating, exploiting, yielding undue influence over, choreographing, or misrepresenting our local candidates, all in an effort to preserve and perpetuate a long-standing financial hold over the decisions of our council members. God bless you. These power-grabbing pseudo-oligarchs lack having great weight to opine or cast a vote in an area to which they have no residency. They are just a few reasons I speak in support of the 10-1 voting system, along with the 81% of voters in Virginia Beach who shared their position in support of 10-1, single district voting representation. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Eddie C. Say, I'm sorry, I may not be pronouncing your last name correctly. And then Georgia Allen. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, my name is Eddie C. And I'm a new resident of Virginia Beach for about two years now. And um, one of the things that attracts me to Virginia Beach is the progressive actions taken by the city. And one of the things that makes me feel good about this city is the fact that we elect our representatives, our city council members, based on districts. And districts are very important. That concept itself is very important to, America, to the American Constitution. It's ingrained in the American Constitution. It's ingrained in the Virginia Constitution. We use that method to make sure that our people are represented fairly and equitably. And so I ask you tonight to make sure that we make this a part of Virginia Beach. It is important. It is a, something that for someone that's been involved in politics, obviously, for a long time. It is very important for all of us to be represented equally and fairly. And I think because we have different districts, because we have different personalities in those districts, that is a much better way to do it. And so I ask you for that support tonight. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Georgia Allen. After Ms. Allen is William Calhoun. Good evening. Good evening. Huh. Here we go again. My name, of course, is Georgia F. Allen, and I have been a resident of the city of Virginia Beach since 1954. Virginia Beach really has been in violation of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 almost since its inception as a city. This, uh, Virginia Beach became a city in 1963, and two years later made a conscious decision not to abide 
by the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which was the law of the land. It continued with an at-large system that clearly discriminated against this non-white population in every respect. The election system that went from its origin of a county to a city maintained a fully at-large system with the 731 structure. This forced people to vote for persons that they didn't know, did not receive representation, and fostered a system of discrimination. The 731 system also made it virtually impossible for people to run and get elected if they were not a part of a specific demographic, a certain interest group, or a particular financial class. The new 10-1 system affords any person to run in their respective district without allowing massive influence from outside forces. It allows a person with a small amount of money to run and get elected because their community knows them. They know who they are. They are part of the fabric of their community. They live among the people. They are recognizable because their children go to the same school with the other children that they represent in their district. And in many instances, they participate in many of the activities of their community. No matter who they are, they no longer have to run in a citywide race of over 464,000 citizens in approximately 292 miles long city. They now can run in a district of approximately 48,000 with the voting population between 33 and 38,000 citizens. And they have between eight to 14 precincts per district versus 108 precincts citywide. This system is not fair, the 731. But is, this system is not fair, but is open the old system is not fair, but the new system is open to the small business owner versus the Thank you very the much. Developers. Appreciate it. Thank you. That was three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The next speaker is William Calhoun. After Mr. Calhoun is Ralph Parham. Good evening. Good evening. How is everyone doing tonight? Thank you for allowing me to speak, Mayor, City Council members. I'm in favor of the current 10-1 system that we now have. Uh, everyone's already spoken in favor as to why we should have it. I'm not going to regurgitate that. The biggest thing is accountability. The citizens within your district comes directly to you, Ms. Henley, Ms. Wilson, whoever, instead of having to go about the entire city. The other aspect of it is talking about voting. Yes, when you come together as a collective, if your case is urgent enough, then you'll get the other people to vote for you. It's not just nine to two, all right? So if you have an important issue, when you bring it forth, everyone will work with you. 10-1 allows citizens, everyday citizens like myself, to meet with you, talk to you, communicate with you, without having to worry about who else I need to go see. That's not fair to the average citizen. The people do know, we did put publications out. We addressed the concerns earlier on the 10-1. City put out flyers from the city manager to all of the citizens. So they know about the system. So that's enough red herring. All right, big business, we need to get away from big business. They're not people. Their corporations are not people. So we need to start looking at people to run our government. The diversity up here, we didn't have that before. Diversity of thought, interests, and personalities. That's what makes this city run. We need to keep 10-1 so we can keep the diversity of our city, which is diverse, on this city council as well. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Ralph Parham. <coughs> and after Mr. Parham is Gary McCollum. Hey, welcome, Ralph. Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Manager, Council. My blood run, runs deep through this land since the 1400s. Like Mr. Cummings, my mom was a Native American woman. My dad was a black man. He came here, his family was a slave. And the thing that we have here, that we need a referendum for this. The people need to speak, and we need to start nurturing 
our citizens. We are here, you are here as council people to make sure from the, from the body to old that we are nurturing these kids and these people that need to be loved. And that's why people are voting you in to make sure you're taking care of them. Thank you. The next speaker is Gary McCollum. After Mr. McCollum is Ellen Dunbar. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, I am Gary McCollum. I'm the co-founder of the Virginia Beach Bay Civic Engagement Group, Do the Right Things. And first, I want to congratulate uh, all those who got reelected. Uh, I wanted to send gratitude to those who ran and lost, and thank you for what you've done for this city. Uh, the Virginia Beach citizens, they cast their vote for leaders who will continue to represent them to the best of their ability and who do the right thing. I'm here today to support 10-1. This is an election system that has been through the courts, it's been through the General Assembly, and it's an election system that is supported overwhelmingly by the citizens of this city. Legally, the election system passes all federal and state laws. It was given preclearance by two, two Virginia attorney generals, including Jason Mayares. It was also approved as a charter change by the Virginia House of Delegates and the state Senate. City Council was also wise, and I compliment on you, compliment you on this, to uh, engage the University of Virginia's Weldon Cooper Institute to conduct an extensive, independent, fact-finding survey on how Virginia Beach elections proceed. Over 81% of the citizens of Virginia Beach in that statistically valid survey said they wanted 10-1. While special interest groups continue to influence city politics. They need to be honest in their intent and just say, this is about control of taxpayer money. This is about controlling, and I'm not gonna get into VPAP and who gave to what, because you know what those, those issues are. You know where the dollars went. Let's stop the politics. Stop the voter suppression with push polls financed by Virginia Beach's top political donor, Bruce Thompson, my good friend Bruce Thompson, he's a member of the same golf club I am. By the way, Walden Cooper did 4,500 surveys. They did uh, in-person uh, sessions. That poll which I, that Bruce Thompson gave you on November 1st, who did it? 500 people, is that statistically valid? His buddies at the Virginia Beach Hotel Association, the Virginia Beach Restaurant Association, the Atlantic Avenue Association. We need to stop the politics. The people I've spoken, they want 10-1. Directly electing their representative in the district without having influence from the outside, that is what the people want. Over 64% of our citizens voted in this past election. You did a great job of educating them about the 10-1 system. They understand it. Thank you, Gary. Virginia Beach is just the place that Thank we you. need to make sure that Bruce Thompson and his Thank special you. interest folks are not influencing Thank what you. goes on in this city. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker is Ellen Dunbar. After Ms. Dunbar is <coughs> Carl Wright. Good evening. Good evening. I come forward to say that I want the city to please stay the course for what the people have already decided. I attended all of the in-person meetings held in each district when we were discussing this. Um, I know there were eight that were held in person, there were two online. So in each one of those meetings that I attended, you had people from all walks of life and they all were leaning the same way. So I don't understand to what end is the opposition saying that the old system is the best system. Um, the old system does not give the essence of one person, one vote. So I don't understand why we would want to go back to that. With the system, with the 10-1 system, we all have the same voice. Um, 
I know during the course of time I've lived in Virginia Beach my entire life, no one from, from some far area of the city has ever shown up to my door to ask what I wanted in my neighborhood. And the 10-1 system lets everybody have a voice and a seat at the table. So I think that uh, I've sat and I have watched the oceanfront flourish and other big businesses flourish during the time that I have lived in the city of Virginia Beach. But while they flourished, my neighborhood, most of the houses in my neighborhood on the street that I lived in, did not have, water, have uh, running water or indoor plumbing. And city council was all right with that. They knew where certain neighborhoods were, but nobody was reaching out to us. So I have a newly elected person representing me in District 8. And I don't know where he was when we all talked about this ad nauseum. And then it went all the way up the chain to the governor, and the governor decided, well, you know, let's table this. And I think that's all politics. So I don't understand, to me, uh, if, if, if he wants to make it make sense to me, I don't know who all he was talking to and, you know, how it was presented, that I would say, you know what, I don't want my, my voice heard. I want those <clears throat> other folks from over there somewhere who, who know better than me what I want for myself, for my family, for my neighborhood. And so if you're thinking about doing anything else different, I would say, please don't, because the people have already spoken. We said what we wanted. You had a study uh, done, and you also had the citizens come out to voice their opinion. Now, anybody who was sleeping on that was just not paying attention. And I don't think that, uh, I don't know, there's been a lot of fear mongering going Thank on you. about this, that, and the other. Thank you we very don't need much, to go there. Appreciate it. Right. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. The next speaker is Carl Wright. After Mr. Wright, we have one WebEx speaker. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Like Georgia said, here we go again. <clears throat> let me say, let me start off saying this first. You are a city council and you are a mayor, but you represent the people. Understand, just because you were elected, that doesn't mean that you are the uh, king or queen. That means that when the people speak, you listen. You can buy as many seats on that city council as you, as you would like, Mr. Bruce Thompson and whoever these guys are. But at the end of the day, the people rule. So let's stop, let's get over this thing that we are kings and queens and we making deals because we're on city council right now. The people have spoken, Mr. Mayor. 80% has said they want the 10-1 system. That means that in my district, I get to talk to the person that says they represent us. I get to tell them how I feel. And when they don't do the right thing, I get the chance to try to kick them up out of there. That's what I enjoy doing, and that's what it's all about. There's no dictatorship where I, you get up there and then you make the decisions with the uh, contractors and the developers and all these folks because, oh, I got up here. You're going to be elected. You, you get elected, and you have to continue to get elected. It doesn't matter how many seats them guys buy. You go over and over and over with elections. So the people rule. Thank you for serving. I really appreciate it. It takes a lot to sit up there and come here every Tuesday. But it's a choice that you made. Do the right thing. This is America. We go through stuff. But you're elected. This guy came up here and said that the people don't know. What they didn't know was that a large system that was unfair, discriminatory, and hateful. My family go back in Virginia 300 years, Mr. Man. Now, I know you come from out of state, but boy, I can tell you some of the stories that I've heard, man, it would turn your, turn your head around. That's why I'm here, because of the next generation. I remember coming up here, coming into this council, Ms. Henley, and looking at the faces, 
And I could just imagine what my ancestors went through when they had to go through faces that didn't look like them. Ask for things that they should have anyway. Damn near beg for stuff that they shouldn't have to beg for. I'm here and gonna keep coming. Just like I heard folks that went before me. They spoke for me and I'm gonna speak for those that come behind me. Do, do, do what you're supposed to do. This is not a dictatorship. Now you can look hard and mean. Thank you very much, Carl. Appreciate Thank it. you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. The last speaker is WebEx, Tammy Mullins-Rice. Ms. Mullins-Rice, you were unmuted and may begin. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Tammy Mullins-Rice. And um, as an engaged citizen of Virginia Beach who has participated in numerous surveys, focus group meetings, and multiple referendums on this topic um, of the 10 1 council leadership, I cannot believe that this is still up for discussion. We have had the most diverse and engaged city council due to the 10 1 system. We do not need to go back to disenfranchising large numbers of Virginia Beach citizens to satisfy a small special interest groups. We need a council that is accountable to the citizens and that is what we have under the 10-1 system. I do not understand why we continue to spend our wheels and dollars and tax money on this same issue. I have a district councilman that I can reach out and talk to, that I can email. Recently, I saw an issue on next door that the people in the community had been spinning their wheels for three months. And I was like, oh my God, this isn't right. And what did I do? I emailed my city councilman. I emailed the city manager. And guess what? It was solved in 24 hours instead of just posting on a, on a site and nothing being done because I had access and accountability to my councilman that I vote for in my district. This is important. This is a huge deal. We do not need to go back and you do not need to take away the majority of the citizens of Virginia Beach what they have said. We've spoken. We said this is what we want. And for Mr. Cummings, congratulations on your election. But understand that you were elected due to a 10-1 system. You only had to knock on doors in your district. If you were under the other, other plan, you would have to knock on doors all over the city. So understand that benefit before you come back and say people don't understand what this is about. We are smart, we are intelligent, and we are voters. Please remember that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tammy. Mayor, that's all the speakers for that public hearing. Okay, uh, we're gonna move on to our next uh, charter, uh, uh, our next uh, public hearing. And it's for the fiscal 2024-25 City Beach Public Schools Operating Budget and Capital Improvement Pro uh, CIP Program Amendments. There are no speakers. Oh, I'm sorry. There are no speakers. No speakers? No, sir. Okay, next is a declaration of sale of excess property adjacent to 245 Realty Lane. There are no speakers. Okay, number five, acquisition by agreement or condemnation Temporary permanent easements for Laskin River Basin Ecosystem Restoration Project Two, uh, Project Phase Two Wetland Construction CIP. There are no speakers. Okay, the exchange of excess property um, at the Catholic Diocese of Richmond, approximately 16 plus or minus acres, owned pro, uh, located on Indian River Road. There are no speakers. Mr. Mayor, may yes. I make a comment? Yes, you can. I, I would like to just address this because I gave some wrong information to the um, person who called me, who was a, a neighbor of this property. I just assumed that it would be going through the redevelopment or the uh, development uh, issue as a rezoning. Uh, but I'm guessing now that since it's a cemetery, it may not have to. Uh, but um, the, the neighbors have not been visited about this to tell them or give them any opportunity to ask questions or to have any input. So I'm hoping that within this week, before it comes back to us, that uh, since the city is a property owner, that we will reach out to the neighbors over there and uh, make sure any concerns that they have are answered or they have a chance to, uh, to make some comment because that's something that 
is not going to happen if we don't have to have a rezoning for this property. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we're going to move on to number seven, proposed cafe franchise agreements for Grill Virginia Beach LLC at 405 19th Street, Ray Sidewalk Cafe, and also My Vida Virginia Beach LLC at 332 20th Street, Ray uh, Sidewalk Cafe. There are no speakers, sir. Okay, number eight, city-owned property at Town Center, parking franchise for valet services. There are no speakers. All right, and then the uh, final one was the lease of property at the farmer's market. First is building six, space to Lisa uh, Pruss, and then uh, building six, spaces three and four to Chapman's yeah. Flowers and Gifts. There are no speakers, sir. Okay, uh, next, before the consent agenda, I will read the speaker's policy. I want to remind everyone that the city council speaker policy that allows certain representatives of groups to speak for 10 minutes applies only to planning items. All other speakers, whether speaking individually or on behalf of a group, will have up to three minutes to speak on a single item. Speakers are reminded that comments during the formal session of the meeting must be limited to the subject of the item that is being considered by council at the time you are called. For items placed on the consent agenda, a speaker will have up to three minutes to address any single item. If a speaker wishes to address multiple consent agenda items, the speaker will have a cumulative total of six minutes to address those items. Again, the speaker must limit his or her comments to the subject matter of the items that had been signed up to address. Finally, I call upon all speakers and persons in the chamber to be civil in their discussion and decorum. Whatever views you hold and wish to express, the city council wants to hear from you and to ensure that all uh, viewpoints and all persons are respected. The best way to do this is for us to strive for civility and respect. Are there any one issue items? No, Your Honor. Okay, at this point, if we can do the consent agenda. Excuse me, Madam Clerk, was um, under planning Kimsville Christian, was there one speaker on that? Just only if there were any questions, and at this point you're on consent Okay, so approval. that involves consent. Okay, um, thank you. So under, <clears throat> under ordinances resolutions, the resolution to designate General Street in the New Light community, Ray, in memory of George L. Kimball, requested by the city council. Number two is the ordinance to amend section 35-35 of the city code Ray equalization of assessments requested by the board of equalization. Number three is the resolution to adopt the city's 2025 legislative agenda with the exception of page 12, which is a general laws on the 10-1 system. Uh, there's four council members voting against that, which is Dyer, Henley, Wilson, and Berlucci. <clears throat> Number five is the ordinance to authorize the acquisition of temporary and permanent easement either by agreement or condemnation, raid the bus stop infrastructure and accessibility improvements phase 9A project CIP 1050.009A. Six is the ordinance to extend the date for satisfying, excuse me, for satisfying the condition in the matter of Whitney W. Elliott, right closure of one half of an unimproved, unnamed alley adjacent to the rear of 218 55th Street, and that's in, in Unit B. Number seven is the ordinance to extend the date for satisfying the condition in the matter of Matthews E. Mancall and Robert A. Mancall, right closure of one half of an unimproved unnamed alley adjacent to the rear of 219 54th Street. Number eight is the ordinance to authorize temporary encroachments into a portion of city-owned right-of-way known as Arctic Avenue for Grill Virginia Beach LLC at Avenue Atlantic Park rake, construct and maintain a patio, fixed railing, planter boxes, pergola, trellis, support costs, so, excuse me, support posts and concrete footers, and that's in District 6. Ordinance to authorize temporary encroachments into portions of city right-of-way known as 20th Street as 
Me Vita, Virginia Beach LLC at Atlantic Park. We construct and maintain a patio, railing, pergola, and support posts and concrete footers. And that's in District 6. Number 10 is the ordinance to authorize temporary encroachments into a 100-foot city-owned drainage easement and a 5-foot city-owned drainage and utility easement located at the rear of 5345 Fairfield Boulevard. Reconstruct and maintain a timber pier with an L head and maintain an existing timber shed, and that is in District 1. Number 11 is the ordinance to accept and appropriate $451,360 from the Virginia Early Childhood Ed Foundation and Old Dominion University Research Foundation to the FY 2024-25 Parks and Recreation Operating Budget Race Support Programs focused on expanding air access to preschool services. Number 12 is the ordinance to accept and appropriate $322,550 from the Virginia Department of Behavioral Health and Development Services to the FY 2024-25 Human Service Operating Budget Ray Workforce Initiative. Number 13 is the ordinance to appropriate $2,535,000 no, from the fund balance to the general fund where you provide interest-free loans to the volunteer rescue squad for the purchase of ambulance and, and equipment to outfit the ambulances. Number 14 is the ordinance to appropriate $430,659 from the Technology Trust Fund, FY 2024-25, the Clerk of the Circuit Court Operating <coughs> Budget Raise Support, Technology and Related Needs and Upgrades. Open a public hearing no. on planning. Oh, I got one more to read. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. My apologies. Number 15 is ordinance to appropriate $31,410 to private dredging revenue to the Capital Improvement Program Project 10550 Chatelon Area Dredging to Ray Access Basin Dredging Agreement. Yeah. Okay, open the public hearing on planning. <laughs> and number one is the Kempsville Christian Church, AKA Kempsville Church of Christ for modification of conditions to a conditional use permit, Ray Construct two additions to the existing church building at 5424 and 5432 Parliament Drive, and that is in District One. And we're going to defer this next item, which is number two, is the ordinance to adopt, and in, we're going to defer indefinitely, and incorporate <clears throat> into the Virginia Beach Comprehensive Plan 2016, right, the Urban Forest Management Plan 2023, which will supersede the Urban Forest Management Plan 2014. And number three is the ordinance to amend 1501 of the City Zoning Ordinance Ray, eating and drinking establishments in the FRT1 zoning district. Move for approval. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, let's open the vote. The vote is open. I'm going to vote. No to the uh, legislative agenda. Otherwise, I'll vote yes. What? Miss? The entire agenda? I thought you were voting no just on page 12, Councilmember Henley. Barbara. Pardon? Are you voting on, you're voting no on page 12 of the legislative agenda? I, I'm sorry, it was just too confusing, so I'm just going to vote no to the whole legislative agenda. Okay. 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 If you could change your vote then, because right now you're voting yes. Okay, you change your vote to yes, Barbara. No. Are you, so you're voting yes on the consent agenda, correct? Just no on the legislative agenda. Yes, Is that yes. correct? I'm voting no to item three. And, but because you're, okay, yes. thank you. By vote of 11 to zero, you Otherwise have approved it. yes. Okay. By vote of 11 to 0, you approve the consent agenda as read by Vice Mayor Wilson, noting Councilmember Henley's nay vote on item 3. Okay. All right. Now we'll go back to the item um, ordinance resolutions number 4, resolution to request the General Assembly to amend the city charter rate, implement a 10 single member district election system. The first speaker is Eric Majette. 
and then Bernita Richardson will be following. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members. I'm Dr. Eric Majette, President of the Virginia Beach NAACP. Uh, the Virginia NAACP, as well as the Virginia Beach NAACP, firmly um, would like to endorse, as well as encourage you all to incorporate the 10-1 voting system. Uh, we truly believe that the citizens of Virginia Beach have already spoken. Uh, we've had sessions, we have information sessions, we've had town meetings. So we're asking if you all will move forward with that. Thank you. The next speaker is Bernita Richardson. After Ms. Richardson is Georgia <coughs> Allen. Welcome back. The city of Virginia Beach has been in violation of the Civil Rights Voting Act since 1965. There was a referendum on the ballot of 1994. There is no legal recourse for the delay in codifying the resolution and changing the charter of Virginia Beach to reflect this 10-1 single voting district system. We are aware of what 10-1 is. We are aware of how 10-1 affects us and our community. For those who are not aware, most of us are now literate. We read, we understand what 10-1 single district is. And guess what? We know what we want. We are not confused. I'm a transplant citizen here from a small rural town in Virginia and was amazed and perplexed when I first voted here 24 years ago. I was surprised to find that the voting system in this fair city was as it was. It is time to stop whitewashing, diminishing, minimizing, suppressing, and disparaging our votes. It is my request that we stop pandering and pretending and request that the General Assembly, um, that we, you all send the resolution to the General Assembly to amend the city charter and re-implement a 10-1 member district election system. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Georgia Allen. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. I tell you, it's a little hard getting up out of that seat these days. <laughs> Okay, again, I'm Georgia F. Allen, and uh, I have been a resident of this city since 1954, and I am in support of the charter change. And I was amazed to find out that the gentleman that was just elected to office is not familiar with the Code of Virginia 24.2-311. I mean, 311, yeah, 311. <sighs> Where it says that during a decennial redistricting, legislation is enacted to accomplish the decennial redistricting, and that goes into effect immediately. Okay, so we redistricted. The lawyers know that the decennial redistricting goes into effect immediately. So this back and forth is, is a really a waste of time. And I'm sure that all of you, since you've been sitting up here for a while, must have read it. You must have read what uh, the Code of Virginia says. I find it hard to believe that you wouldn't read it. And so after much deliberation, so much time that we have spent, it really is time to go ahead and change the charter because the charter is simply it is simply a formality. If someone tells you that the decennial redistricting goes into effect immediately by law, by code of Virginia, why are you waffling on this? For what purpose, for what reason would you waffle? You've gone through this every 10 years, so you know what the code, or you should know what the code says. You should know what the change was with regards to um, the new law that was put on the books with regards to making sure that we no longer have these at-large 
systems because they are discriminatory. You should know that having a 10-1 district system, which we definitely need, and this system is a system where all voices are heard, regardless of who you are. Our council should no longer be beholden to any special interests. Our council members would no longer feel that in order to get elected that they have to commit a conflict of interest because of campaign contributions. They shouldn't feel that way. You guys shouldn't feel that way. The 10-1 system is, in essence, a campaign finance reform. That's simply what it is. And I don't understand why you guys don't understand that. I don't understand why the citizens Thank don't understand much. that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. The last but speaker I hope that helps you out, Mr. Cummings. Is Carl Wright. I used to come up here two times. <laughs> Boy, this is the first time for this one here, Mr. Bayer. But look here. <laughs> Everything I said before, I mean, this is not a dictatorship. It's not. You know, the 10 1 system has been put in place. The citizens have approved it. The federal courts have approved it. The General Assembly, Mr. Mayor, has approved it. And you can keep messing around with these guys going back and forth, threatening to sue folk, and I'll sue you, and I'll sue you, and I'll sue. Let them sue. But do what the citizens have asked you to do. They put you back in, 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 in the seat, Mr. Mayor. 80% of the folks asked for the 10 warrant system. Trying to buy seats in different districts and all these so-called big shots putting money in different campaigns is not going to change anything. Now, you can try to go in the other uh, direction if you want to. We've already said it. We went out. I know I went to at least 10 of those town hall meetings, Miss Henley's town hall meetings down here in uh, Croatan, all over the city. And everyone wanted the same thing, black, white, and other, male, female. So what's the issue? If the people have spoken and asked for the system, why do we keep going back and forth because a handful of people say they don't want it? We're not going back. That's not happening. So, I mean, you can sit up there and uh, wonder how to convince us to go back. It's not happening. You know, so I will say to you, Mr. Mayor, let's get by this. We spent a lot of money, time, effort, a lot of division, Headaches, aggravation. I know your head have to hurt with this right here. This is going on and on and on. It's time to move forward. We don't need it, Miss Henley. We don't need it, Miss Wilson. We don't need it, Mr. Bellucci. We don't need. We don't need the seven three one. We need the ten one. We want the ten one system. Now there is no confusion with that. The gentleman said there was there was some confusion. The confusion was the, that at-large system that did not fairly represent everyone. That's it. There's no confusion. I think I know what the 10 system is. I know exactly who my representative is in the 10 system. Now, at-large, I was in trouble. But here we go again. We want to get to 731 because that's as close to the at-large system as you can get. We're not going back, Mr. Mayor. Thank you Thank for having you. me up here twice. Thank you. Mayor, that's all the speakers. Okay, we now have the uh, item up. Uh, do we have a motion? Yes. Do we have a motion? So moved. Oh, the motion is to pass. Is it to pass? Okay. It's to pass. And do we have second? It's to pass. Second. Ten one. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a you know a point of clarification. I think there may be a, a misunderstanding here. Um, it's not that my, I have always been since I've been elected in two thousand four proponent of a seven district system with three at large and one mayor. I was in favor of a district system, and this is a possibility. 
you know, going forward. I don't see us going back to the old system, to be honest with you. And I don't think that's really the intent. Uh, two other concerns. Number one is, you know, when you have a major change like this, uh, you know, people, um, you know, should have, you know, a referendum should have been done of something of this magnitude. And, uh, you know, but once again, uh, you know, there were certain circumstances that precluded us from doing that, mostly COVID. And we found out that we had the 10 one system. We were, we were not consulted by the General Assembly. We found out about it pretty much at the time of the vote. We had no input in it at all. But I really think that it would benefit the public to you know, hear both sides of the equation. Uh, but the other thing is of concern, there is a legal action that is out there that might be scheduled, uh, you know, probably around April or May last time that challenges uh, the system and it's, it's going to court. And it's my understanding, as the governor did veto it last time, and it would probably do it again this time. So there's just a you know, bunch of um, ambiguity out there right now. This is a confounding, uh, it's, it's really an emotional thing to a lot of people. But once again, I think the ultimate goal is to get it right. And if we can, you know, maybe construct some type of win-win, I don't know. But right now, there was just a number of factors out there. Um, and I do speak to quite a few people. And, you know, they say, boy, I wish I had some say in it. Maybe we find out and get educated on the, the positives and negatives on both. But once again, you know, this has been a very tough emotional you know, thing for a lot of people. Anybody else at this point? Oh, yeah, Jennifer. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I'd like to share why I'm supporting the 10-1 system. I shared my perspective during informal, but having listened to the feedback, I just jotted down some notes. So uh, I'm passionate about this, not as a partisan issue, but as a voting rights issue in terms of access to power and shaping and influencing power. So when I campaigned in District 10, I recall, and all of this is anecdotal, only um, UVA has the statistically significant valid survey data. All I'm sharing is just, as many of us have, my personal experience within the system. So when I campaigned in District 10, um, I can't tell you how many people were shocked that a city council candidate was knocking at their door. They, I, over and over again, I heard no one from city council has ever campaigned here before, frankly, because no one has had to prior to the 10-1 system because people were able to garner votes just from certain pockets of the city, which then meant many neighborhoods and communities were underrepresented because candidates didn't go and speak to those residents to learn about their issues and then to represent them. Um, so speaking of money raised, in my race, I, I checked my VPAP, I raised $20,881 $20, for my race. My opponent raised $180,000. And I brought this up during informal that it shouldn't take six figures to win a seat that pays $28,000 a year. Because if you're spending six figures on a council seat, what are you paying for? I take um, issue with this idea that the public has not been educated. And I appreciate the number of um, speakers who spoke to that because there was the Weldon Cooper survey, um, the city mailed out mailers, and I'm, um, many might not know, I'm getting my PhD in public policy and public administration, and my I'm leaning towards my dissertation in public engagement with local government. And I don't, I've been trying to figure out what the word is, but I don't know if it's naive, I don't know if it's a false logic to assume that putting something to a referendum, so I'm pregnant and I can't breathe, so I'm just trying to, <laughs> that putting something to a referendum equates to the public being educated. I don't think that matches. That doesn't make sense to me. Because how many times has our city put something to a referendum and voters show up and they're like, oh, I was prepared to vote for a person or I was prepared to vote for the president and now all of a sudden I have to read this statement. So I think it's unfair to assume that, and I think it's a false logic to try to make the claim that a referendum equals public education. It does not. The public has been educated, and I think um, that's the same line that seems to play out from 1994, there was a referendum on the voting uh, system. 
And the argument was the public didn't understand what they were asking for. So let's do it again till we get what we want. It's the same cycle that I'm seeing play out where the public has given us feedback and the response is, no, you don't understand. We're gonna do it again. We've already litigated this in the courts and as a body since 2018. It's a lot of taxpayer money that we've been putting forward uh, fighting this case. And it ultimately doesn't speak to the issue of the violation of the Voting Rights Act, which is what brought this all here to begin with. But if we take race aside, another issue is money. And I had never thought of it as a campaign finance thing. But really, I'm an educator and I don't, you know, my network is of other educators and I was able to win this seat on $20,000 because I live in the district and I work in the district and I worship in the city and I knocked on doors. And when we change this dynamic and we reintroduce the role of money into the voting process uh, by asking people to um, find enough resources to get their message out to more people. Um, one of the, um, I guess, commendations of the 10-1 system that I've heard is that uh, it's made us more responsive to the public. So I've heard from residents, not even in my district, that say, uh, Ms. Uh, Tammy Rice Mullins mentioned it, when I have an issue, I know who to go to. So there's something about group dynamics when there's a lot of people, there's something called diffusion of responsibility. So when I know that we're not going back to at large, but even a 731, when just the, the residents are diffused among more and more people, the response is slower because it's like, well, that's you or it's you or it's your issue. In a 10-1 system, it's very clear who's responsible. And if that person is not responsive, they will get voted out and someone else will get voted in who should represent that community. So, you know, I believe we're here because of politics and it's very frustrating to me um, on something as serious as voting. I think our job is to represent the voting rights of this city and to put this forward. If the governor wants to play games and veto, that is his right to do that. But it is our job to ensure that the voters of Virginia Beach and I think if, if there is any ambiguity in this process, it's us introducing it. Because we keep saying, but we know, we know what the pathway is forward. And yet we're still doing this game. So I'm supporting it tonight. And um, thank you. Thank you. All right, yes. Chris and then Rosemary. Chris. Testing. All right. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. Thank you, Council. Hold on. Is that better? Okay. The public um, is not confused, but I want the public to know that the first action Council Member Rouse uh, Councilwoman Wooten and I took in this new uh, body was to call a special session because we had a staff member uh, at the time who was um, the title, to be respectful, uh, was the Director of Legislative Affairs, um, went to Richmond and misrepresented the new council's position and inserted confusion into the process. And so any confusion starting from January 2023 through today, the root my great grandmother used to say in the country, if you want to get to the problem, dig out the root. The root was a disingenuous, unaccountable, incompetent staff member that was terminated for their behavior. And I want to share an email because Councilwoman Rouse, unfortunately, politics 
is in play every day here at City Council. We had a representative that's paid by the taxpayers to do a job, and they didn't do that job, and they were terminated for not doing their job. And our city manager um, did his best to handle the situation, but the public never really got a complete overview of what happened because we spent five seconds talking about it. In January 2023, I wrote an email to this uh, staffer, this professional staff member, and it was a very simple question. Did you send in written testimony and provide in-person staff or virtually for the subcommittee meeting? The response with Mr. Duhaney copied, <coughs> Dear Council Member Taylor, no. Following this email and after discussion with our state lobbying consultants, we decided that the better course would be to have a member of the lobbying firm on hand in case there were any questions from the subcommittee and need for testimony. There being no questions, testimony was unnecessary and the bill was supported by unanimous vote of nine to zero. I fully intend to provide support to HB 1528 when this bill is presented to the full committee unless I am directed otherwise. Unfortunately, that same staff member sent a communication to all of the committees, the subcommittees, stating that um, they wanted to be transparent that the new council had not opined or determined if we were supportive of what the previous council had just done in November, December. And that was not their job. And so if, if there's any confusion in the public, it started in our city government. It started with someone not doing their job, representing what the people had asked them to do and the council had directed, and if you doubt what I'm saying, ask Mr. Duhaney if that staff member is still present, and the answer is no. They were terminated. And it put the three minority members in a place where we had to call a special session without talking to the mayor, because we could see the landscape was a little slanted. You continue to hear that this bill was brought up without any communication to city council. Yet, if you ask the previous body who attended the legislative meeting to determine the legislative priorities, only one side of the aisle showed up. And they stated, according to our mayor, that without unanimous support from city council, they couldn't move forward. Yet, before the interference, the subcommittee unanimously voted nine to zero until they were told by a City of Virginia Beach employee that there was confusion down in Virginia Beach. And so, I want to set the record straight. It is political. There are consequences to elections, and Mr. Cummins, just so you know, my mother's side was fully Native American, so we share that in common. It was a young black African Native American that was elected in District 8, and you're right. It is an 87% white district, one of the most affluent, and I wasn't elected because I was black, and you weren't elected because you raised $200,000. You did the work. The people voted. But the reality is today we're faced with some uncertainties and the question the city of Virginia Beach citizens should ask, can you trust that when you put your voice, voice forward, will our professional staff, not all of them, but as you all know, if you've read any children's book, it only takes one bad apple to ruin the whole bunch. This started right here in Virginia Beach with a rogue employee deciding that they would mislead the General Assembly, mislead the subcommittee, and as a result, they lost their job. So here we are today, and this next council is gonna have to 
step up to the plate and explain to the people, if not 10-1, what? There are no other options, according to Mr. Stiles. At least we haven't been presenting them. And so don't take at face value that everyone's confused. There's no confusion. The governor came down to Virginia Beach and endorsed the candidates he wanted to endorse, got involved. I'd never seen governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, all the delegates come down in August to endorse city council candidates. The fact of the matter is 10-1 prevents some special interest from influencing. But the truth of the matter is you still have to go out and work the campaign. You still have to win and the voters still have their voice heard. So I continue and will encourage all of you to make your voice heard. Our government is not corrupt. Our government is not wicked. But my first test here in the city of Virginia Beach was uncovering that a professional staff member didn't do their job. And as a result, we are here today dealing with an issue that we've been dealing with for two years. And so be prayerful, be supportive of your new council members, but hold us accountable. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, let's open the vote. vote the motion is to pass. The vote is open. By a vote of seven to four, the motion carried. However, Mr. City Attorney, correct me if I'm wrong, by their policy it has to be two thirds, so this will not be included in the legislative agenda. Is that correct? I believe the policy is three quarters, so it would require nine votes for a charter to recommend a charter change. Sorry, thank you for the correction. So this will not be included in the legislative agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Uh, at this point, do we have any appointments? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have a couple. Uh, the Clean Community C Commission to appoint Susanna, Susanna Doyle and for Act to appoint Andy Bond. Move for approval. Okay. Votes open. One second, please. It's open now. Thank you. Um, by a vote of 11 to 0, you have appointed those as read by Vice Mayor Wilson. Okay. Is there any unfinished business? Any new business? Okay. Let's adjourn to open mic. Thank you all.